Wednesday morning at Damon's Hall Airfield in Essex, and it's time to go flying. Oh my goodness. And we're airborne. It feels so light. It mightn't look particularly special, but this Pipistrelle Velis Electro is the world's first fully certified electric plane. Would you like a go? I would like a go. <laughs> <laughs> the Pipistrelle has a cruising speed of around 100 miles per hour and can only stay airborne for about 50 minutes. But in an industry seeking to lower its emissions, there are more dynamic forms of electric aviation out there. Last year, Rolls-Royce unveiled the spirit of innovation. With a range of around 100 nautical miles and top speed of more than 340 miles per hour, it's the fastest all-electric vehicle in existence. I've come to Derby to find out more. So we have three electric motors that were giving us our, our 500 horsepower that, that push the aircraft through the sky to reach those fantastic speeds. But they only take up about this much space. So pretty much everything from here backwards to almost where the pilot's feet are is our large battery. And therein lies one of the great challenges of all electric aviation. We're not going to go see a situation where we're all going to be sitting on the sort of aircraft we're used to going on holiday on in, in, in an all electric battery powered aircraft. You just can't get the energy density in the cells to enable that to happen. But what this does unlock is the ability for us to travel in small aircraft, sort of 9 to 19 seat, what we call commuter aircraft. In fact, Israeli company Eviation says that this summer it's aiming to carry out test flights of a battery-powered commuter plane able to carry up to nine passengers around 400 nautical miles, although it should always be remembered that this industry is not short of lofty claims. Back in the UK, the government is helping projects like the Spirit of Innovation through the Aerospace Technology Institute, which has been given £685 million to spend over the next three years. What things do you think need to happen to really make meaningful advances? in this sector? I think it's certainly uh, money. So this requires huge, uh, massive investment. You know, it's not just the technology, it's also the infrastructure, etc. that's required to support that. I couldn't put an exact number on it, but it is many billions of pounds. Billions rather than trillions. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's certainly billions of pounds. And billions are rolling into one particular sector of the electric aviation industry. Last year, investors poured around $5 billion into companies developing manned electric VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing craft. Most of that money came via SPACs, blank check investment companies, and some promotional videos do look a little speculative. So how realistic are companies' ambitions? Is the technology mature enough? to start flying around urban spaces. The limitation is not so much the technology in my view. The technology certainly is mature enough. Uh, one of the challenges is the certification and obviously the safety standards of, within aviation. So you know, flying is one of the safest, if not the safest form of transportation. And we do not want to lose that uh, reputation. In Bristol, Vertical Aerospace, which has Rolls-Royce as one of its design partners, is aiming to fly its VX4 prototype later this year. Designed to carry a pilot and four passengers, the company is working toward having a commercially operational craft by 2025, initially using existing transport infrastructure for its ports. We've designed these aircraft so that they conform to uh, helipad restrictions. So in theory, we could take off from helipads in cities and eventually there will be vertiports as well to support these. Potentially, electric VTOLs could alleviate cities' congestion problems and provide more environmentally friendly urban transport. Vertical went public in December in a SPAC deal. Its VX4 craft comes with a price tag of around $4 million. Would you acknowledge that there are still technical barriers that are, are keeping this from, from really taking off, to use a terrible pun? So we only started our commercial function less than a year ago and we've already sold over $5 billion worth of aircraft. So they're conditional pre-orders. Um, quite obviously they are dependent on us successfully certifying the aircraft because that's the point at which the aircraft is um, legally allowed to be used in commercial operation. And the real challenge is around certification. We essentially have to prove that the vehicle is safe. 
It is a genuine challenge. At this point, none of the urban air taxi startups have received certification. And it should also be noted that shares in many of the startups that listed in 2021 have fallen sharply. Bold visions are, after all, no guarantee of future viability. So if you're itching to get airborne in a fully certified electric plane, for the time being, your best option is the Pipistrelle I was in a few days earlier. So we're just going to be gliding down towards the airfield. Things are undoubtedly moving quickly in electric aviation, but we should perhaps make sure that for the moment at least, we keep our expectations grounded.